one of the, the terms that we hear used quite often around lung surgery is VATS. So can you tell us what is VATS and what would be considered in terms of the recovery from an operation such as VATS? So VATS is basically in a lay terms keyhole operation. Uh, it's abbreviation from video assisted thoracoscopic surgery. Uh, what does it mean is that instead of making a large incision and using our hands inside the chest, uh, we make small incisions where the largest one is between four and six centimeters. And uh, some surgeons might use additional one or, one or two, one and a half centimeters incisions for camera and additional instruments. We don't put our hands inside the chest, but instead we are using special instruments. Uh, so I call it a little bit like a chopstick operation uh, because of the instruments inside the chest which has advantages for much faster recovery of the patient and also uh, lower risk uh, after surgery and uh, shorter post-operative length of stay. In general, I would expect that the patient stay in hospital for about four days, although again, it's individual based because some people are in very good shape, some people are more risky for the surgery, uh, some people have no complications at all, most of them, some people might have some complications. So some people might stay uh, less than that, some people might stay longer than that, but I would say on average about four days. When they go home, they should be able to walk. Uh, and if they have a stairs at home, they are assessed by the physiotherapist that they can walk stairs as well. And uh, they have a usually combination of uh, painkillers, including paracetamol and codeine. On some occasion, they might have oramorph as well, if they have a little bit of pain. And I would expect that that is usually kept for about two, three weeks. And after that, I would expect that they will be only on paracetamol and uh, less strong painkillers than morphine or, or codeine. After two or three weeks, they will be able to drive. So um, that's uh, encouraging for the patient that it's quite speedy recovery. And uh, I would expect that uh, they will be fully recovered, like no operation happened approximately uh, five to six weeks after operation. Uh, there's a really recommendation that uh, they should not uh, do any heavy lifting, meaning lifting more than 10 pounds for these five, six weeks, just to make sure that all the tissue, which for this rapid during operation is well healed. Um, so I would always stress this uh, to the patients because if they start to do more activity than is recommended, uh, then they may develop something like a chronic pain or little tear in the muscle, which can lead to uh, less optimal outcomes with some chronic sort of niggling pain around around the incisions as such. The, the VETS procedures are uh, currently the procedure of choice for prevention with lung cancer. Obviously not everybody can have an invasive operation because if the tumor is too centrally or too large or more complex, requiring more complex operation, then the whole operation cannot be performed. So currently in the UK, probably between 55 and 60% of all the patients are performed by keyhole operation and the rest is performed by the conventional thoracotomy. If someone needs a lobectomy, will the surgery be done as an open operation or is that, can that be done by VATS? So in the current era, about 55 to 60% of all lobes which need to be removed are done by keyhole operation. Uh, but in a situation when it's more centrally localized tumor or requiring more complex surgery, then it's performed by open. There's a difference between certain lobes. So on the right lung, we have three lobes, which have different size. So the upper lobe uh, has about uh, one third of the lung. The middle lobe is one fifth of the lung and the lower lobe is one half of the lung. Um, so that might sort of mean that if the lower lobe is uh, removed, especially if it's a little bit larger tumor, the incision might be a little bit larger, uh, let's say between six, eight centimeters. But if it's a uh, middle lobe, then the lobe is obviously very small. So the incision might be, might, might be smaller to accommodate just the size of the lobe as such. If I talk about the left lung, so, so on the other hand, uh, as I said, the right lung has a three lobes. On the hand, the left lung has a two lobes only. Uh, the, the upper lobe is a little bit larger than the lower lobe, uh, but there is no middle lobe on the left side. Apart from lobectomy, which is uh, mostly performed for lung cancers as such, we already mentioned pneumonectomy, which is removing of the whole lung, but there are also less than um, lobe removal for lung cancers. And these are called segmentectomies. 
or wedge resections. Uh, so the wedge resections are mainly for patients who usually don't have very good lung function tests or who have multiple operations on the lungs. The segmentectomy uh, seems to be something which will be developing more and more because currently there are studies which shows that if the tumor is uh, less than two centimeters in size, maybe the segmentectomy, meaning remove a small amount of lung and lobe, might be oncologically having the same outcomes or very similar outcomes like removing whole, whole lobe. And as we see more people being diagnosed earlier through the lung health check pilots in England and the potential uh, potential advent of, of lung cancer screening, are we likely to find more of these small tumours where a, you know, a segment can be removed? So you're, you're taking away a smaller tumour and a smaller amount of lung? Yes, yeah, so the lung check is a very, very good project because uh, there is a, um, already proof from the, from the literature that uh, if the patients come for screenings and they are found to have lung cancer, most commonly uh, these lung cancers are found in an earlier stage, which means they are usually smaller, which is obviously much easier to treat, and much easier to cure. And again, uh, if they are smaller, then maybe in the future or even now, uh, they are, when they are smaller than two centimeters, if segmented tumor is feasible, uh, then the segment will be probably removed rather than low or whole lung. So definitely with the screenings, um, we have uh, patients who are having much earlier stage of lung cancer with much higher chance of cure. So that's why uh, this screening program is developing. And one of the interesting uh, things we've begun to hear about in the last few years is the possibility of doing lung surgery using a robot. Is, it, is this something that's actually, you know, not a sci-fi idea, but, but potentially something that could be useful and could be available in the UK? Yes, yeah, so, so historically, um, it was said that big surgeons use big incisions, which was uh, something which was used in the past. And obviously uh, the technology wasn't developed in such a way that there was a possibility of performing uh, uh, less than thoracotomies for removal of uh, lung cancer. So, for example, in UK, until about 2010, only one or two percent of the patients had um, a keyhole operations. Mostly it was performed by open procedures. But within the last five years, it became procedure of choice for lung cancer. So um, we do not know at the moment what will be the development of the patients uh, of the of the uh, new procedures, including robot. It is available in UK. I think there's approximately 10 units in the whole UK uh, which which perform robotic surgery, including removal of the lobes. And uh, at the moment, it's sort of um, not the procedure of choice, but it has certain advantages compared to whole operations for example the, the arms of the robot are much more flexible so it sort of imitates uh, the flexibility of the hands inside the chest uh, as compared to keyhole operation which i mentioned is uh, we are using instrument which is like a chopstick operation so the flexibility <laughs> of the instrument is much less uh, and also uh, on a robotic um, instruments and robotic console there's a possibility of 3d vision so so basically um, when you look at the picture on a wall, it's like a 2D picture. Mm. So sometimes it's difficult to estimate the depth of the tissues. But if you have a robot, uh, you have 3D vision, which means that uh, you can estimate the anatomical structures and the, the depth better. So uh, currently, um, I would say that uh, the evidence is uh, developing to clarify if the robotic is better uh, than, let's say, keyhole operations. But at the moment, um, I would say it's still sort of in the early stage.